Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we look at the numbers in and around Phoenix and see if we can try and figure out what's going on with this market. We look at the numbers and say it is what it is. I don't make any wild predictions and don't talk really fast and tell you that we're going to have a crash. I know you've seen those out there. So just want to take a solid look at what's going on and see what we can glean from that information. The more you know about the market, the better you are prepared to buy or sell. And that's what I'm doing here. So I've been doing it about a year now. I was doing it every morning at 8.30. Now I'm kind of tapering it off, doing it about three days a week because real estate numbers don't really change that quick. Now today we have 5,800 homes on the market. Uh, that's, that's really low for a Monday. And we've been really low. We're still climbing out of the holidays. And we'll probably be at 5,500 tomorrow. That's really low. <laughs> so let's take a look at how low low is now if you look back here this is when we came out of the christmas season back here notice the yellow line is number of homes that are under contract the blue line are new listings that come on over a seven day average and they both kind of rode relatively close together as we came back up and stayed there through the spring well right now our listings as far as new listings coming on are coming up at the same rate that they did seasonally last year but the sales aren't the sales are lagging now that could change over a couple days so that's something i really want to watch there's a 600 home gap here and uh uh Jeannie wants to know tell her what the market's like in gilbert yeah let me do that before we uh, get out of this um so this gap if this gap starts to to climb even further you'll see a bit of a change in the market now my suspicion is that this is hanging lower because of a couple things so we're going to touch on it today one nothing we can do about it the virus has got everybody sick staying home except they all went to the cardinals game yesterday and we lost um the other is there's some real volatility in interest rates and we're going to talk about that in just a second because um you know there's a lot of chatter about when I look this way, I'm looking at my other monitor. A lot of chatter about how high rates are going to go, and Realtor.com and CoreLogic predicted that we'd be at 3.4 by the end of 2022. And lo and behold, last week, we already hit it. So it says here, highest mortgage rates in nearly two years. Now, we're still below four, so you can't get all wigged out about this. But seemingly overnight, the mortgage rate narrative has changed rather dramatically, at least in relative terms. While rates had risen gradually from near all-time lows in August, they were still in a historically no range, low range by the end of December. A week later, we're at the highest level in two years. And here's what they're saying right here. Look, look what happened. Boom. Now, why is that? Well, you know, the Fed first came out and said that they were going to start uh, tapering the purchases of mortgage-backed securities probably in um, January. And so the market adjusted to that and said, okay, well, we don't think that's going to be a big deal. So they, they made an adjustment and baked the cake. Then the Fed came out and said that they're probably going to start backing off on treasuries and going to start um, possibly looking at raising rates around March. Then they came and gave us the triple whammy where they said, well, they're actually going to start that sooner than they thought and more aggressively than they thought. And last week the market said, whoa, I, I don't remember that. <laughs> and uh, so they, uh, they're they getting a little jittery now. So we're going to see some volatility. And Jackie here says, good morning, Rick. I think we'll go up for a bit and then come back down later in the year. Fed can't let the market tank. Um, I believe so. I think uh, um, that we're going to see some real wild swings you know, days where things go up and down a quarter of a point. So if you're purchasing a home, stick with your lender and know when to lock. And uh, also keep in mind that when I show you a rate that's 3.45, there's already people out there that are 4%, and there's still people hanging down there about 3.1. So it varies. Don't call your lender and say, hey, what's my rate? Because they don't, they don't have a rate. You hear Pat and I talk about that a lot on Fridays. There's no, no such thing as just a rate. It depends on you your down payment, your debt to income ratio, and your credit score. And then they can give you a rate because they take that information and shop it with different lenders and they're able to deliver you a rate. And more importantly, the fees. How much does it cost to get that loan? I've seen some where you can go in and you'll get the same rate at, with this uh, major brokerage and you get the same rate at another one and the difference in fees is $7,000. So it's worth 
shopping. And it says, <laughs> here's the chart. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a chart follower, but I, I get it if you guys aren't. But this is when the bond market goes down, rates go up. And they start talking about candlesticks and all this stuff, momentum. Red means it's going down. Green means it's going up. Look what it did in one day. This is last week. So the markets are going to be watching it today to see what's going to go on. So that is when I talk about volatility. Now, this is 10-year treasuries. Treasuries go up. Mortgage rates follow right along. And bam, it went over what they call a major support level. So those of you that are chart junkies are just really excited about, about this chart right now. So it said the bottom line is that is a very big, very important and relatively abrupt, abrupt repricing of expectations that's taking place. It has to do both with Omicron's impact and the Fed policy outlook. Batten down the hatches. This could get worse before it gets better. And to Jackie's point, it probably will. It'll get worse, and then we'll start seeing some improvements in rates. So what are we seeing in our market here? And I like to follow this one because it lags 30 days. It's closings over list over the past 30 days. So it, it's more current than what you would see on Zillow or Realtor.com or Redfin because it's our local market. And it's how many homes are closing above list price. And look what happened. We went up. We went up to 49% from a low of 46%. Not a big jump, but December, sales picked up in December unexpectedly in Arizona. Actually, nationally, sales picked up pretty good. Part of that was, you know, the rumbling of interest rates going up. People that were on the fence, like, I got to get out there now. And uh, so they went out in droves in December. And Jackie even got a, a listing um, uh, a contract sent to her on Christmas Day, and they said they wanted uh, a reply by Christmas night at 8 o'clock. That is hilarious. So in this range, this price range right here, 300 to 400,000, 51.2% of the homes are going above list price with the average of being $10,000. And $10,000 across the board till you get to $600,000, $700,000. If I want to take an individual look at the city of Gilbert here, Let's see what's going on in that town. And you see that um, on average, they're 53%, so even higher than the entire valley. Gilbert is on fire. In the 400, 500,000 range, 67% of the homes are going above list price. That's, that's bidding wars, folks. And look at this. An average of 12,000, 10,000, and 14,500 to 600 to 7,000 range. And that's a brisk price point out there the number of listings in gilbert are i mean i can see if i can pull this up for you but they're they're insanely low uh just like everywhere else so if we look at uh, uh here's where we're at today we've actually gotten back up last week close to where we were in 2020 but i can tell you that they update this every saturday when next week's comes out it's going to be even lower so let's go to gilbert here and see what's going on and as I crane my neck here, okay, here comes Gilbert. Um, they're actually a little higher than last year, but 204, that ain't much. <laughs> Look how bad it was last year. 140 homes. I mean, that's dismal. And back here in 2019, we had 343 homes. So that's the story of the day. And that's what's happening in our, in our market across, across the world. Um, if you watch the show on Friday, and it's a long one where I interview Pat, pointed out that in Toronto, a, a town of uh, 6.9 million, they have 2,900 homes for sale. And the average price in Toronto is $2.2 million. So the difference between supply and demand up there is so dramatic, it's going crazy. Now, the Canada tried to clamp down on this by saying they were not going to take any more foreign investment. People from Taiwan and Hong Kong and Japan were buying things in Vancouver, British Columbia like crazy. So they put a stop to that. It didn't move the needle at all. So sometimes the government tries to clamp things down. They have a different mortgage system up there than we do here. Perhaps if you're from Canada, you can uh, let us know in the comments what your loan looks like up there. I know they don't have um, um, fixed mortgage rates for 30 years. There's pros and cons on that. Um, Got a question here about surprise in the West Valley. I can wrap this one up really easy for you. Let me show you what's going on there. Builders are paving a way for even more homes across the valley. In surprise, 
you don't get to see the number of new listings when I show you inventory. And it's about the same. It's one of the hottest parts of the valley right now, Josh. Um, and here's one here that says that hammers are flying as home builders are busy building more homes in the valley. And here's TriPoint Homes. They want to build something in the uh, southern part of Gilbert. It'll bring 445 single ham family homes. But then when you look at other builders, Newport Beach, where's he going to build? Surprise. Century Communities, where are they going to build? Uh, Pinnacle Peak Road. And uh, also Oakwood Homes is going to build uh, uh, in Surprise. Uh, Toronto-based Matame Homes is buying, guess where they're building? In Surprise near Joe Max Road. So Surprise is the market where they're headed. And if I look here at inventory, I'll see if I can pull this up real quick for you, Josh. And hang in there with me. Where is it? superior surprise right there so let's see what's going on with their inventory numbers uh we're up slightly 216 versus 184 last week a huge gap between 2019 price is going to go up this quarter there's no way around it not unless you have some kind of black swan event there's always something that's hanging out there very interested to know what if we're going to see any contagion from the evergrande situation in china i'm going to be talking to sam de green about that on wednesday morning at 8 30 so i hope you can all join in and listen to that i want to find out because there are now three major developers in china that are the first one's practically insolvent the second one's knocking at the door to insolvency there's a third one raising its hand going yeah hey uh we're in trouble too and that is making china's economy tank and when china sneezes we catch a cold so whether or not it's going to have effect on this, I have no idea. I'm not an economist, but uh, um, they are definitely slowing down. So their real estate economy out there is 25% of their total GDP. And most of those companies have bought um, U.S. dollars. So, you know, most of their financing is U.S. denominated bonds. So that's what I want to find out when I talk to Sam on Wednesday. In the meantime, take on the day. Have a terrific week. Oh, 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 oh,